Ho, ho, ho! Now what would you like for Christmas, small child? I... I want a pet sea rabbit! Well, you see, unlike Santa here, sea rabbits don't actually exist! Don't listen to him. Santa isn't even real, you idiot. <laughs> but sea rabbits are real, and you can get your very own. Just look at this little guy. Aren't you the cutest little thing? Yes, you are. You can cuddle it. You can be nice to it. You can instill your deepest and most intimate secrets in it as your confidant. So when my mom walked in, she didn't even notice the body that was so, so soft you can't, can't even, even feel it. it. But really, it's... It's like incredibly soft. When I first touched it, I was like, God damn! Now this is a pre-sale, meaning that if you don't order your official bona fide sea rabbit plushie in the next 10 days, you don't get one. See that guy over there? That's Father Time. He's speeding up the passage of time right as we speak so that you lose your chance to get one. Because he hates you. Now go click that link in the description so that you can get your own sea rabbit plush to bring some vestige of solace to your decaying soul in these otherwise miserable times. So, I have this thing called vasovagal syncope, which may sound confusing and technical, but I'll try to make it easy to understand. I know you came here to be entertained and occasionally blow air out of your nose at mediocre comedy, but stay with me for a second. I'm gonna teach you something medical, and I'll make it as relatively painless as possible. So, grease up those brains, put on your thinking caps, and get ready to, uh, to, to, to knowledge. And yes, I am qualified to do this because I am a nursing student, aka nurse boy extraordinaire, which pretty much means I'm a nurse, which is kind of somewhat close to being a doctor. So basically, I'm a doctor. Let's start by breaking down the words vasovagal syncope. Vaso pretty much just means your vascular system, which is your bloodstream. It's, it's your blood vessels and stuff. Your internal plumbing of blood. Vagal refers to your vagal nerve, which is a very important nerve in your body. It sends information from your brain to the rest of your body about autonomic processes, which means that you have absolutely no control over them, like your heart rate, blood pressure, sweating, digestion, and you can also probably partially blame it if you're having trouble getting it up. And uh, syncope is just a fancy word for fainting. So you put these three parts together, and what do you get? Exactly! Bloodstream vagus nerve fainting. It all makes sense now, right? Oh? It doesn't? Are... are you dumb? Are you like... like... like a little baby or something? You still don't know what it means? Cause... cause you're dumb? Alright, I'll explain it more. Vasovagal syncope is your body's overreaction to certain triggers that it perceives as unpleasant, disturbing, or emotionally distressing. Let's pretend that there is a fellow, and he has experienced vasovagal reactions. Uh, he is walking along one bright Thursday morning, and suddenly he happens to find a pile of dismembered human toes. Just a pile of them, sitting there, on the sidewalk. His brain is like, wow, that is really unpleasant and disturbing, and so his brain sends a signal for god knows what reason, down to the vagal nerve, uh, to the rest of the body, and two things happen. First of all, it tells your heart to slow down, which is the opposite of helpful. This causes your cardiac output, which is basically how good your heart work, uh, it causes your cardiac output to get very low. Secondly, it tells your bloodstream to get big. And so what your bloodstream does when it gets big is it vasodilates, uh, meaning it goes from regularly sized tubes to big tubes, which look like this. Now what this does is it makes a lot more space in your blood vessels, and that space needs to be filled by something. Thanks to gravity, it makes all your blood from up here go down here to fill that space. The bad thing about this is that you're losing blood that was in your head, and your brain needs blood because blood provides oxygen. Oxygen is very important for correct brain operation. When your brain loses oxygen, you faint, which is very not helpful. In summary, it's kind of a nonsensical reaction to a trigger where your brain is like, Oh no! And then it has an absolute meltdown, kind of like 
if there were a fire and someone just decided to scream and run around in circles. Except in this case, your brain kind of just shuts itself off and makes you faint. All right, we're done with the learning portion. I hope you are all full-fledged medical professionals at this point. Uh, now I can get to talking about my own personal experience with vasovagal syncope and why I kind of hate my brain because of it. This is something that has happened to me since I was very young. I'm not sure how old I was when it first happened, but the earliest I can remember, I was probably seven years old, maybe? I can't really remember. But the reason I kind of hate my brain is because consciously, I don't feel repulsed or disturbed by the things that my brain has decided to freak out about. Kind of confusing, I know, but I'll give an example to help. One of the earliest times I remember this happening was on a family bike ride. Uh, we were all biking, obviously, and I was eating an apple in my right hand because my dominant steering hand is my left, even though I'm right-handed. Uh, it's weird. But I was just eating my apple while biking, and we had to stop for some reason. Since my right hand was preoccupied with holding an apple, I had to use my left hand to hit the brakes, which is the front brake. I had forgotten that when you hit the front brake hard, there's a good chance you'll tip your bike over, and that's exactly what happened. It wasn't even like I crashed my bike or went flying over the handlebars or anything. Literally, all that happened is I lost my balance on my bike, and it kind of just tipped over on its side, which landed me in some grass on the side of the road. I was completely unharmed apart from the bike that landed on my leg. And consciously, I realized this. I knew I was perfectly fine, but for whatever reason, my brain found this to be extremely emotionally distressing and have a complete meltdown. I didn't realize what was happening, but obviously my mom got very concerned when she saw her child looking up at her, completely pale, like, Mother. That's another thing that happens with these reactions. Since all the blood is leaving your head, you get really pale and your lips turn blue. I've never seen myself when this happens, but I would guess I kinda look like I died about a week ago and they just found the body. And surprisingly, I've never actually fainted from this happening, but I get close. Very close to losing consciousness because my vision gets all cloudy, and I feel like when you take a VCR out of an old television and you get the <laughs> Some of you are probably too young to understand that. I also recover from all of these in about the same way, which is to lie down and drink fluids to help get my blood pressure back up. Jump forward a few years to when I was like 12 or something, and I did a 24-hour fast with a church group. We were allowed to have water during the 24 hours, but that was it. They made us bake brownies for other people while we were fasting. It was awful. I made it to 23 hours and 30 minutes without eating anything. And then my brain was like, I am so hungry right now that I am going to completely shut down. And so once again, I could feel the blood leaving my head. So I turned to one of the counselors running the group and I was like, Hey, I don't feel too great. And then he saw this deathly pale child staring up at him about to pass out, so I was dragged into a room where I could lay down and given orange juice, which was against the 24-hour fasting rules, but they didn't want me to pass out. I found that to be extremely annoying because it essentially meant I was the only person who couldn't last the full 24 hours without caloric intake because I got weak brain. So you kind of get what I mean when I say I hate my brain. It's not like I felt physically hungry enough to pass out, but my brain decided to do it anyways. It's like I'm fighting some internal force for control over my body where the smart, logical me just wants to keep going about things normally, but there's this crazy monkey that wants to absolutely smash the big red faint all your problems away button. At least it doesn't happen enough to be a real problem. It's maybe happened like close to 10 times in my entire life, and it happens far less frequently now than when I was younger. It's also happened in response to disturbing medical things, which would make you think, wow, it's probably a bad idea to be going into the medical field then. Anyways, before I started nursing school, I had shadowed at multiple hospitals where I saw a bunch of different surgeries and been perfectly fine. 
But one day I witnessed something called a lumbar puncture, which is basically when a trained medical professional uses a needle to put a little tube into the spinal cord and draw out spinal fluid. But the first time I saw this being done, all I knew was that one, I am going to watch a lumbar puncture, and two, it is used to get spinal fluid. That's it. I had no idea what to expect otherwise. I expected to see something get punctured, which I derived from the name lumbar puncture, but other than that, no idea. So, I am watching as the patient just sits on the side of the bed. Okay, the doctor is now injecting something into their lower back with a needle. Uh, they now have a different, much larger needle. Wow, that, that is a large needle. They're really, oh my god, they're really putting that thing far into the patient's back. I wonder how deep that's going. Okay, okay, they they took something out, but there's still a plastic device creating a hole in their back. Okay, they're, they're putting something back in the hole. I wonder how deep that goes. Oh my god, that looks painful. I wonder if the patient can feel it, dear god. And then my brain starts to freak out because of all of these unknowns, and it kind of just jumps to worst case scenarios. Like, I bet that needle is going super deep, and I bet it's super painful with absolutely no anesthetic whatsoever, and I bet they're suffering intently and might die. And what I've found is very helpful in these situations is to know what's going on before you watch it. I'm totally chill with watching lumbar punctures now because I know what's going on and why they're doing it, as opposed to guessing what could be happening, which leads to these wildly imaginative worst-case scenarios, if that makes any sense. Since I've been in nursing school for the past one and a half years, I've seen plenty of stuff far worse than that and been totally fine. It's also a lot easier seeing them done to someone else than having it done to yourself, which brings me to the last and most recent occurrence of weak brain syndrome. This happened when I was getting blood drawn for a blood test. I've had blood draws lots of times before and it's been totally fine. They just yoink a needle right into my large, veiny arms, take like one test tube worth of blood and that's it. Everything was going the same as usual, the nurse got a vial of my blood, then she took out another vial and filled it up. Then she took out another. And another. And another. And another. another one. This was totally unexpected, and my brain went along the line of thinking that she was taking a significant portion of my blood, which she wasn't, but it of course started to freak out. I think it was around the 7th or 8th vial that she looked at me and said, You don't look so good! And I was like... <laughs> At which point, I was heavily assisted to a bed where I could recover. Once again, didn't actually pass out, but got pretty close. This kind of goes with the same idea that it's helpful to know what to expect in these situations so that you can properly mentally prepare yourself. Also, I only had like a bowl of cereal and some water that day, so my blood pressure was already super low, which didn't help at all. But before I end this, I kind of want to give a pro tip for anyone who may experience the same thing. First of all, if you think you might be put in a questionable situation where your brain freaks out, it's helpful to be well hydrated and have eaten plenty of food to keep your blood pressure up, unlike what I did. Also, if you do feel yourself becoming lightheaded, like you might faint, uh, sit on the ground, preferably with your back against the wall. Uh, this is especially important somewhere like a hospital where you might be given a chair to sit in. If you actually faint, that's still a good two foot drop for your head to fall on some hard flooring, which could cause some serious damage. Alternatively, if you want to get the worst possible head injury from fainting, the technique would be to jump in the air so that you lose consciousness while in mid-air, and then there will be no way to stop your head from hitting the ground in the most damaging way possible. Thanks for watching. In other news, I made an Instagram because I want a way to put out more personal content that I wouldn't put on my YouTube channel, such as pictures, probably some lifting videos, and uh, photos, just whatever's going on in life. So give me a follow on there, at just a sea rabbit, if you're interested. But...
just, uh, I really kind of, uh, just, uh, anyway, thanks, bye.